morning guys and welcome on back to she's diabetic well it's morning for me here i don't know where it is for you here but whatever it is good day and welcome my name is andrea i have been a type 1 diabetic for over 19 years and this is just a channel all about that my life with type 1 diabetes tips tricks vlogs that kind of thing so if you're new here welcome thank you so so much for joining me and all of us here and if you're returning welcome on back so let's get real for a minute when I was braiding my hair as I left the bathroom I caught my insulin pump tubing on the doorknob and ripped my side out now this is very uh, annoying <laughs> because it wasn't time to change my sight and I have been stateside for much longer than I planned to be originally I normally live in the UK so uh, pump supplies are running short for me and that was actually way more annoying and disappointing than I'm even portraying to you right now um, it really was uh, frustrating to me so not to start this out on a bad note, but to start this out on a very realistic note that it happens. I'm going to change my insulin pump site and then carry on with my morning routine. Also before I change my pump, I should do a little blood sugar check-in. So luckily I'm right now at 102 and stable. So hopefully this pump site change won't be too disruptive to that because I was pretty happy with that waking up. So there I am and let's get this pump site changed and get insulin resuming back into my body. I don't know about you guys, but does anyone find that when they like rip out a pump site or things go off with their diabetes early in the day, they like feel off kilter? Like I feel totally like, I mean, it's just a pump site that came out. I just had to change my pump, but like, I feel like a little bit unsettled and off kilter. I don't know if anybody else experiences that. Please let me know if I'm not the only one. I have that thing when an insulin pump site has come out or whatnot, you've had that time without insulin. You're changing sites, so maybe the new site absorption rate takes a little time to settle in. So everything feels a little bit unstable. So at this point, I would never choose to eat something really difficult to bolus for because that would just kind of add insult to injury and add complication on top of complication in my opinion just my opinion not to be confused with fact but it's just what works best for me so this video is very kindly and amazingly sponsored by a company called Nugo which I spoke about in my gift guide and if you haven't seen that even though Christmas has passed, I will link it up above because it's still got great ideas for all times of the year, but I specifically have a very special and yummy place in my heart for this company and their protein bars. I've tried every single one. I've tried them in all sorts of different times of the day and settings and whatnot, and they have just been amazing low-carb bars. They have a lot of different variety of bars but the slim range is a little bit more carb conscious, which is of course great for us as type one diabetics. Their protein bars are around 160 to 180 calories, so they make a great like snack, bedtime snack, mid-afternoon snack, start to your day with a cup of coffee, which is what I'm about to do and I'm so excited. They all have three grams of sugar or less, huge amount of protein, like around 16 grams of protein, lots of good fiber, and they just taste great. Something that's really cool, and I'll put a little more info here and down below, is that these guys are sweetened with chicory root. That is a almost zero glycemic impact sweetener. They have been a great way for me to just grab one of these guys in the morning or in the afternoon, get a little sweet pick-me-up that I've gotten very accustomed to, scarily accustomed to over the holidays, but without that punch of sugar and that glycemic impact. And, and right now in the situation that I'm in, kind of what I feared would happen has happened. I am 163 side arrow going up. So I haven't eaten anything, but my blood sugar because of that minuscule amount of time without insulin and because of switching over 
to the new pump site, it's climbing. So what I'm gonna do is have one of these bars. By the way, my favorites personally are the espresso and the mint chocolate chip, but they're all delicious. But these are my absolute favorites. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and have a mint chocolate chip and a cup of coffee and then work out. Now normally I would work out fasted, but ever since introducing these into my morning, I've been able to actually eat something but still achieve a stable blood sugar throughout my workout, which has been a really exciting find for me. More info down below on Nugo, all about their range. Like I said, they have other ranges, but the slim range is the more kind of carb conscious range for you to check out if that's something that you're interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolus 12 for this and five for the coffee, which would bring me up to 17. Have that and then work out. It's a little bit over bolusing for what I'm eating, but I do have that climb happening because of the new insulin pump site. And then I'm gonna work out. So I would normally bolus more if I wasn't gonna work out, but because I am gonna work out, it's kind of all balancing out and I'm being considerate of all those factors. So I'll check in with you at lunch, because after all, this is a what I eat in a day video, and I'm doing a lot of talking for a what I eat in a day video. <laughs> being a little stubborn and sticky 161 straight arrow I do believe there is a downward trajectory ahead of me but it's just gonna take some time so therefore with lunch I'm keeping that in mind I'm keeping my lunch a little lower carb so as to not aggravate that trajectory that I've sort of been battling I'm not gonna beat myself up about it I had a rough start with pulling out that pump site changing a new infusion set always has its kind of idiosyncrasies and dangers to it in terms of running a little bit higher. So I'm happy, it's all good. So here are these egg wraps with cauliflower. We got them at Costco. And you can see on the back here, it is indeed total carbs zero. Basically, in my mind, with my calculations, this is a freebie. Then I'm gonna put ham, and vegan cheese on that. Both of those items are very low carb. There's a little bit of carb in the ham because it's a honey ham. So I will consider that a bit for carb content, but not too much. Then with regards to my salad, I'm just gonna do romaine lettuce with some of this vinaigrette. That has, per serving, eight grams of carbohydrate. There's only a bit left there, so. I might not even get a full serving out of there. We'll consider that. Then I've got some carrot sticks here. There are carbs in there, but there's also fiber. So probably like I'll do five grams for that. And then for my dessert, I'm gonna do some of this unsweet vanilla almond milk. That is 10 grams per serving. So really all in all for this meal here, I will probably end up doing 20 grams of carb and I will go ahead and program that in now. All in all, a very, very low carb meal. So very important that I'm getting that fat in when I don't have carbs present in a meal because that's what's gonna keep me personally satiated. Again, it's all individual, but that's kind of where I've had my thought process here. And a lot of that fat will come from dessert when I have that almond milk yogurt, which is really, thick and lovely. So yeah, there's lunch. That kind of gives you an idea of how I've started my morning and then had that mid-morning snack with protein with the egg and some applesauce, so that protein and carb combo to get me through the morning and now this. And then I will probably check in with you for my afternoon snack, which will no doubt involve coffee because coffee. So it's a couple hours later. I slightly feel like I'm about to like present a masterpiece theater, which 
to be honest with you, I am completely fine with. And I also asked over on my Instagram a few ask me anything questions. So I thought I'd answer a couple of them here while I was having my afternoon snack and any that I don't answer, I am gonna do a proper standalone Q&A. So don't worry if your question isn't answered here. And for everyone that did ask a question, oh my goodness, thank you. So to talk you through my snack, I never had that almond milk, unsweetened vanilla almond milk yogurt after my lunch. I just kind of got busy with other stuff. So I am having that now. It looks very basic, but it's really yummy. That is about 10 grams of carb. I've got my coffee with unsweetened almond milk and I bolus about five grams for this, even though the unsweetened almond milk doesn't have any carbs to it, I find the caffeine in coffee really does tend to send me up. I need a little bolus with that, which is also why I like to drink coffee sometimes with food and not on its own. Like sometimes when it's totally on its own on an empty stomach, it shoots me right up. Oh, and by the way, I got, I got so excited about eating and answering the questions, I forgot to bolus. This is, this is not advisable. Okay, so I think this is a good one. Sweet Maria Ta, or however you should say that, asks me, how did you end up in London? I think this is a good one because it sort of explains my scenario here right now. So I am currently in Michigan, which is where my family is from, and I'm currently very, very, very lucky to be staying at my family home with my mom, and this is where I came for the holidays, and I normally live in London, but because London has got the new strain of the virus and is on severe, severe lockdown, I made the call both because I thought it would be more comfortable to be here and more safe and more kind of responsible for me not to travel back to London after the holidays. So I'm gonna wait to see how everything pans out there. Thus why I'm filming in a bit of an unusual setup. For those of you that normally watch me, you're probably like, where on earth is she? So how did I end up in London normally, which is where I normally am? I went to school there. So I went to school for a year here out of high school. I ended up in a program that I really didn't like. Um, it was really just a bad, bad fit for me. And I went and I took one year to do an overseas study course in Bristol, England. I went to school then in London, got my BA there and then I just stayed ever since. I never really saw myself as a person that, oh my gosh, I really wanna live overseas. Uh, I want to be an expat, any of that sort of feeling. But there are many, 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 many wonderful things about living in London, as you can imagine, plus um, the universal healthcare, which takes very, very excellent care of my diabetes. And I've had some wonderful, wonderful doctors and nurses and endocrinology teams there, so um, very lucky. Okay, this is a simple one. Olivia Sparkle asks, what infusion set do you use? I use the AutoSoft 30 with the T-Lock. I'm on the T-Slim. It's a, um, I think a three millimeter cannula, a little plastic cannula. It's not a needle or anything like that. Those are the ones I use pretty much never had a problem with them. Of course, you get the kinked cannula once in a while, but I like them. They work for me really, really well. Okay, grace underscore d dot xx asks, how did you tell people you had diabetes? I'm newly diagnosed and finding it hard to tell people. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm so, so sorry about your recent diagnosis, but I also welcome you to the club. This is a very loving, amazing, amazing community. Just take a look down at the comments section. Like this community is the best in my opinion. So I am so sorry about your recent diagnosis, but please know that you are not alone. Um, and if any of you are newly diagnosed watching this, please, please, please know that you're not alone. And it does get easier. It's, it's a hard disease to live with, but it does get easier and it's, it's doable. And it just gets, gets so much easier from first diagnosis, in my opinion. So how did I tell people? When I was first diagnosed, I was on pens. So I didn't have anything physically, like I have a pump physically attached to me, which is a physical thing that becomes a talking point that you could say, oh yeah, I'm diabetic. You know, that's why. I have this thing on me. 
So when I was on pens, I didn't really have to tell anybody that I was diabetic because I could just go to the bathroom and take my shots or do it under the table at you know, dinners or whatever. I think when I was a teenager, which is when I was first diagnosed, I was a lot more closed about it, but I also had this openness built into my life because my dad was a type one diabetic and my brother is a type one diabetic. So more people around the dinner table that I grew up with were taking insulin than not before their meal. So that totally skewed my worldview of how normal it was. And I think for that reason, I felt more open, but I totally understand that it's a hard thing to kind of come out with, especially if people don't ask you about it outright and they probably won't because it's a relatively invisible disease unless you have something like a pump on you that physically signifies, hey, I'm a type one diabetic. Say uh, someone asks you how you've been, it's well within your right to say, oh, you know, I've been fine, but I was recently diagnosed with a chronic condition, type one diabetes. That's a way that you could tell somebody. Or if somebody asks, how are you doing? Again, well within your right to volunteer or not volunteer that information. But I would say don't find it strange to say that or don't feel awkward. I find more often than not, people are interested. They're interested and they want to hear about it and they want to talk about it. And I think we as type one diabetics feel more awkward bringing it up than people do hearing it brought up, if that makes sense. Like I, I, I will stick to this so hard. I truly believe people like to help and they like to feel involved and revealing to someone that you have a chronic condition or that you were just diagnosed with something and revealing that can feel very vulnerable inducing feeling, but at the same time, it's, it's saying you trust somebody and you're letting them in. And therefore I think humans on the whole are very respectful of that concept. And so if you want to, I don't think you should feel at all awkward or ashamed to bring it up and tell people. But I do understand it is a very personal decision to do that and a very personal territory to kind of traverse. So I hope that answers your question. I really hope you're doing okay with your recent diagnosis, especially in the middle of a pandemic. Like that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Please be kind to yourself and know that it gets better and utilize this community. We are here for you. So big, big virtual hug to you. Okay, this is a good one from Tyson Wave. Did T1D hold you back from anything you wanted to be? No. The answer is no. That's not to say that I haven't made alterations in my life and don't continue to make alterations in my life because of my type 1 diabetes and being type 1, but I have gone after every single thing I wanted to. In fact, to really go the extra mile on this question, I would say, if anything, it's opened more doors for me. Take, for example, this channel. It's opened more ways for me to kind of express and communicate and uh, talk to, I don't know, um, people. It, it, it's, it's opened more opportunities for me and given me more kind of resilience made me focus more on my health and uh, given me a respect for how precious life is, truly. Now, that's not to say there aren't negative things. I don't mean to sound like, oh, everything's just great. It, it's really hard, right? It's really, really, really hard. But um, I think it's given me a lot of unexpected positives in my life. I've been thinking about making a video about this actually, about the unexpected like positives diabetes can bring to your life. Let me know down in the comments section if that sounds like you'd be interested in hearing that or would that just be sort of like, no, we're not interested. That sounds like a silly video idea. Um, let me know. Thank you for that question. Thank you, thank you for all your questions. And now I'm really excited to do the Q&A. My favorite thing are doing these Q&As, to be honest with you, because I feel like I get to like actually converse with you, which I love doing down in the comments section, but, it's feel, but I feel like I actually get to like talk to you. 
I'm getting like, I get excited when I'm talking about it. I start like stumbling over my words because I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely get such a high off of communicating and um, talking to my fellow diet buddies. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I think I'm gonna have to film that Q&A video extremely soon. It's that time again. It is time to prepare food and mom and I are just cooking up a really yummy dinner. I'm very excited about. So basically we're having a pasta night, but I'm having something a little bit different keeping my diabetes in mind. So inside there we've got tomato sauce with meatballs going. In here, a side of vegetables, peas and carrots. At the back here, I'm boiling some cauliflower rice to have in place of pasta. Now this of course is not something by any means that you have to do as a type one diabetic. You can eat the pasta, no problem. But I'm just opting for a little bit of a lower carb option. Sometimes I find bolusing for pasta a little bit tricky and then the sweetness of the sauce gets in there and it just can sometimes make things a little bit difficult to bolus for. Similarly along the lines of pizza, when you get that like carb, sauce, and fat content, it can become really hard to bolus for. So what I have been trying out is doing a little bit of fun swaps every now and again, which of course I'm covering very much so in this video. And so I'm going to put the marinara and meatballs over a bed of the cauliflower rice and then have the side of carrots and peas and that significantly lowers my insulin needs, which is kind of great. And I found has, has made me be able to achieve better blood sugars after a more Italian pasta-y inspired meal. So spoiler alert, I could tell you everything was like homemade and you know, we slave for hours, but the meatballs are frozen and the sauce is jarred. Let's keep it real here. It's um, not everybody has time to sort of be chefing it up in the kitchen 24 seven. So I wanna keep it real with you guys. Per serving, this has 12 grams of carbohydrate. A sort of hack that sometimes I use, this one isn't totally sugar-free, it has some sugar added, but sometimes you can find tomato sauces that don't have any sugar in them, which will lessen that carb load. Uh, so there's a little hack in case you're you're being carb conscious, that type of thing. And the meatballs that are in there, cooked perfect Italian style, all natural. They're gluten-free and milk-free, which is great for me. And in terms of, per every three meatballs, it has five grams of carbs. So very, very, very low in carb, which is awesome. So let's do our calculations. The cauliflower rice, totally free. Don't have to bolus for that. Meatballs, I'll probably have four or five. So that'll put me just under the 10 grams of carbohydrate um, amount for that. With regards to the sauce, there are five servings. There's 12 grams of carb per serving. I will probably eat between one to two servings of sauce realistically. So that would put me in the 20 grams of carb range. And then with the carrots and peas, it's negligible. So I think for this, this meal, I'm going to do 25 grams of carb. That should cover me nicely. I even am thinking about not doing the full amount of carb because there's a, quite a lot of fat in the meatballs, which will delay the impact of any carb because fat sort of tends to delay the release. When you add fat to a meal, it delays the carbohydrate release. So I may do like 23 grams rather than 25, considering that everything won't hit me all at once. I also may do like a five to 10 minute pre-bolus, considering that there's fat in the meal. If there was no fat in the meal and it was all fast acting carb, I would do like a 20 minute pre-bolus. But since there is, I will limit that amount to more of the five to 10 minute range. So it's been a couple hours since dinner and I just thought I'd come in and close off this vlog and do a little blood sugar check. So right now I am sitting stable at 109 side arrow. So to be honest, I'm pretty darn pleased about my bolus and how that's worked out for me. 
again, it doesn't always work out that way. Please don't think that's always the case. As evidenced from this morning when I pulled my pump site out and things got a little bit wonky, but you know, that's life. And maybe that's what was supposed to happen this morning and I was supposed to document it because that has not happened for a long time. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you found it interesting from a perspective of kind of my highlighting more of what a low carb day in my life of eating looks like. It's certainly not the case all the time that I'm eating this low in carbs, but it's something that I'm trialing out at the moment, especially for my stomach issues and seeing if that helps with certain things, especially because there's a lot of conversation that happens down in the comments section about carbs and are you low carb and are you keto and you know thoughts on this that and the other and really my main thought is you have to find what's right for you trial and error and see what works best because it's not also just about what gives you great blood sugars it's what makes you happy food is you know it's a lovely enjoyable thing as it should be you have to enjoy what you're eating so i can't I can't say what is, you know, what I would recommend. It doesn't matter what I would recommend. It's it's what works best for you and is sustainable and your energy happy and all that good stuff. So, you know, I'm going off on one, but I just thought this would be an interesting capture of a lower carb what I eat in a day and also that that worked really well incorporating and showing you guys the new go bars which fit so perfectly into that picture and I honestly am so grateful I have found those bars because they make that piece of eating low carb kind of doable on a day like this when you really want something sweet but if you're gonna have like a candy bar or something that would kind of blast your carbs way out and you need to take a big chunk of insulin and I find those protein bars taste just like a candy bar I don't know how they do it that shakery root um, it's magical. If you want any more info on them, please go down in the info box. I'll have that all listed. You can go to newgonutrition.com and they sell everything there. They're available in the UK, US, and if you want to get a discount, I have a discount code. It's uh, Andrea15 to get 15% off your order through them. So again, all the details will be linked below and really hope you find that useful. And if you try it out, please let me know. And I hope just generally what I've captured in this video is of interest and also helpful. I know sometimes I talk a lot about what I'm doing and the reasons for why I'm doing it, but I really want to share that with you guys because I could just show you what I eat and carb count it and be done with it. And it could be a short snappy video, but I think there's worth in my talking through my thought process at least that's what I would want as a viewer so yeah I'm pretty much done with eating for today if if I were to have anything else I would capture it but my blood sugar is stable I'm very full and satiated so therefore I don't really think I'll end up eating anymore tonight that being said I really really wish you guys a wonderful day wherever you are in this world I wish you great blood sugars straight CGM lines yummy yummy satisfying and delicious meals that play very well with your blood sugars but most of all and most 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 importantly I wish you a happy healthy mind with it all I I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll see you soon.